Welcome all you whiskey ambassadors to Whiskey One, the channel for the novice, the curious, and the connoisseur. So today we're going to try the Whistlepig 10-year and the 12-year Old World Cask Finish Rise. And I'm super excited because one, these are interesting whiskeys, and Whistlepig is just an interesting name, and I'll get into that here in a little bit. So in 2007, Whistlepig is started up by a man named Raj Bhakta. You may not know who that is, but he was a former apprentice contestant as well as a congressional candidate. Now, Whistlepig is located in Vermont on a 500-acre farm, and the namesake Whistlepig comes when Raj was hiking in Colorado, and he was approached by a stranger with a deep French accent who got in his face and kept asking him, could it be a Whistlepig? And he said it several times before disappearing off into the wilderness. That's how it got its name. So, Early on with Whistle Pig, they got help from a man named Dave Pickerel, who was very influential and famous in the whiskey community. One, because he was a master distiller who had a lot of accolades making great whiskey. Now, early on, he helped design the copper pot stills used that are now making some of the newer whiskeys. However, the whiskey inside these two bottles is not made by Whistle Pig. It is aged by Whistle Pig, however, this is rescued whiskey from Canada specifically Alberta, Canada. Now we don't necessarily know who distilled it, which company provided it, but this is source whiskey that otherwise would be used to make blended Canadian whiskey. So let's pour a little bit and let's see what we discover. This is the Whistlepig Tenure, 100 proof or 50% ABV. And this is made with 100% rye. This is a 12-year rye, again, used with sourced whiskey, and aged in three different barrel types that were used to make wine. So, starting off with the 10-year whistle pig, color is dark and rich golden, almost like copper. It's got a good level of viscosity, probably around medium viscosity. It does have some really long and lingering and clingy legs that sort of ooze down the side of the glass. Let's go for a nose. So for the 10 year, this is 50% ABV or 100 proof, and it's been matured for about 10 years in virgin American white oak barrels and then finished in bourbon barrels. On the nose, I'm getting that presence from that bourbon. It's caramel and vanilla. But interestingly, on the nose, I get also allspice. And it's very fruity, but citrus fruit. Like, almost like an orange peel. And some tropical fruits, too. Sweet. But it's also got the characteristic spice that you get from rye. Like mint and anise and clove. But I also get lavender as well on that nose. Now let's inspect that 12 year. So for the 12 year, this is finished in three different X wine casks and it's 43% ABV. Wow, it's very fruity on this one as well. Now, again, being matured in three different casks. They had 63% of the whiskey aged in Madeira casks, 30% in the French Sauternes cask, and 7% in the Port wine casks. Now this is inspired by old world barrel aging. On the nose, I get more of a richer, deeper caramel and vanilla presence, but I get dark fruits uh, more than I get on the tenure. If anything, the tenure feels more tropical and spicy, but for the 12 year, I get raisin, dates, I get plums as well, but I get a tinge of like apricots. So it's, it's feeling like dark fruits and a bit of orchard fruits as well. But one thing I get that's really nice is the dark chocolate and that honey. It feels rich and dense. All right, I'm getting excited to taste the both of these. So let's start with the 10 year. This is 50% ABV, made from 100% unmalted rye and aged 10 years.
Okay, so for that delivery, very silky, spicy, oily, and viscous. It coats the palate all the way down. Now, this is aged for 10 years in virgin American white oak barrels, but then it's finished in bourbon barrels. And I get all of those characteristics here. And what I mean by that is it's got allspice, that orange peel, a bit of tropical fruits, and it's got all that, that spice kick that you get, like clove and anise seed. And what I also get is lavender, a bit of floralness to it as well. And it's got mint and it's got a good amount of banana and pineapple to it. Like I said, tropical fruit is all over here. And now when we talk about the finish, it's good, long, lingering, and it's a bit spicy. There is that spice kick that just likes to hug and hang on uh, all the way down. I'm going to take one more sip. Man, that balance between spice, sweetness, and perfuminess is doing really well here. And for the most part, the clove, the nutmeg, that floralness from the lavender that you get, the orange peel, those tropical fruits, the mint, and you know pineapple, and, and just a little bit of banana just likes to hang out and play well together. This is 100% rye and it shows well here. This is a good, good representation of a solid rye. So I'm gonna cleanse the palate with a little bit of water and we'll dive into the 12 year. Okay, now I'm very interested to see what the 12 year is like on the taste. Now that I've let these settle, kind of compare between the 10 and the 12 year, I wanna see what's so different about it. And remember, it's been aged in X wine casks. All right. So I'm getting some stark differences here. The tenure is a bit more profound when it comes to that spice, that nutmeg and the clove and the allspice character that you get from that tenure. That is really subdued here. What's coming out more is red fruits, dark fruits, uh, I get raisin. I do get you know vanilla and caramel to give it that creamy texture to it and it is a bit velvety but it's not as spicy as that tenure. I get dates, you know plums and uh, I do get a bit of that dark chocolate and again that sort of adds to the level of creaminess that I get out of this 12 year. So I'm gonna take one more sip. You know, one thing I noticed I didn't quite mention was, as far as legs, this does not have as much viscosity as that tenure. Not sure why, but it does have uh, somewhat lingering legs, just not very sticky like the tenure. I'm going to take one more sip and then we'll dive into overall scores. Oh yeah, I'm really liking the 12 year. So overall scores, I'm gonna give both 4.25 out of five. Now where they're different is, again, the 10 year is more spicy. You get all that rye character really up front. It's not hiding it in any way. And because it's 100% rye, one would expect that it is gonna be spicy. Clove, nutmeg, again, all spice. And with the 12 year, all of that is just subdued, but it's got a good level of complexity. Now with the 12 year, what I get is a lot more fruity presence, dark fruits, red fruits. One thing I gotta say is they're very different and they're very good. Now let's talk overall price point. For the 10 year, you're gonna find it for about 60 to 70 bucks, and I think it's well worth it. It's a good solid rye. Now for the 12 year, now you're gonna have to spend a little extra cheddar. It's been matured longer, it's got different casts that they used that were hand selected to make this different than the 10 year and it does cost more. Now you can find this for about 90 to about $110. Now, is it worth the price tag? 
For me, it's a standout in that it's very different from the tenure. It's not as spicy and it gives it a whole different level of complexity and character than the tenure. And I think that it can be worth it for me simply because I like buying things and tasting things that are different. All right, so we appreciate you guys joining us here on Whiskey One. All the support and the comments have been really helpful. And just remember, next time you're at the store and you see that bottle of Whistle Pig, you might know exactly which one to grab this time. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Facebook. You can check out our posts there. If you have a whiskey that you'd like for us to review or even a tequila that you'd like for us to showcase with you, feel free to comment and let us know. And remember, Whiskey One, it's about the one you enjoy. Cheers.